Right, with this video we're going to talk about actions and batching. Um, the purpose of actions is to store a series of repetitive commands that you would do on an image or a series of images and allows you just to play them back over and over again. So the advantage of this is if you're doing the same repetitive task, um, you can just run it as an action and it will do all the work for you um, over and over again. So the only thing you need to tell it to do is actually create the action in the first place. Now I'm going to do the watermarking example example on the previous video um, to do batching across multiple um, images. Um, so what I'm going to um, ask you to do is if you follow me along is make sure you've got one of your images that you want to watermark open and from that we'll then create our actions. So with this image open I've got here, this slate image, I'm now going to go into the window menu and I'm then going to choose um, actions and this will bring up this list here. Now. I've already created one here called watermarking, but we're going to start again. So I'm just going to click on the default actions heading at the top and click on the um, new actions button. And this will bring up a dialog box. I'm going to call it watermarking two because I've already got a watermarking and click on record. Now, what will happen is at the bottom of the screen, can you see now you've got this little circle icon, um, just like on a VCR, um, you're recording your um, image. Um, so any options I do now in regards clicking and saying OK or apply will get stored in this point. Actions do not control moving dialog boxes around the screen. Um, that is just purely for the options you're doing on the image itself. So with watermarking selected I'm going to now open up another image and I'll explain whilst I'm going on. Um, what I've done is for my watermarking I've already created um, at a particular area here this watermark template which has already got my copyright symbol and my text inside it. Now notice now I've opened it can you see I've now got this open option in my action screen. Now I'm going to now with the selection tool the selection marquee select my particular region and do edit and copy. I'm now going to go back into the slate image I've got and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm also going to rename it at this point. Whoops. I hate that sometimes when you double click it doesn't do what you want. Um, call it watermark and then I'm going to do edit and paste because that'll bring in that information. Um, at which point though I need to do a couple of things. So first of all I'm going to um, edit by free transform and make this much bigger so I'm going to just adjust the size this is shift and alt by the way to proportionately make it bigger on all sides and now go into the filter and stylize and emboss okay and then finally change the mode to vivid light so it cuts through it and there we go we've got our nice little watermark I'm also going to put in copyright information, so file and file info, and I'll go copyrighted, don't, oops, don't steal this, which I've already got on here, and also HTTP PC teach me, and OK that. And once that's OK, you can see how my watermarking option is, is coming to shape. The final thing I'm going to do is save. Now this is actually quite important and I'll explain once we start playing back um, this why we need it. So I'm just going to do save as but I'm going to change the file format from JPEG to let's say PNG and save it. So this is for the first time only. Save it, should get the interlace options, I'll just say OK and just let it go. OK, so now that's saved, you can see I've now got this save option here as well. So all intents and purposes, I'm done. This is the actions done. So I'm just going to stop that now and just go through step by step what we've done. So at the top, if I just click on the arrow, the twirl, it'll show you that I'm telling it to open up the watermark image that I um, told it to do. Set the selection. It's the marquee tool as a rectangle and top to bottom in centimeters. I would prefer that to be pixels, um, but there we go. Um, I then told it to copy the selection. I 
then told it to go to the other document. I then told it to um, make um, a new layer. I told it to change the layer to watermark. I then pasted the image in. I then transformed it. I then put the emboss on it. I then set the current layer to a mode of vivid light so it made it translucent. I then set the file info so you can see everything I told it. I told it to be copyrighted, don't steal in my URL. And then finally I told it to save where I can see I told it to be a PNG format and where it was going to be saved into. So that's it. So if I just collapse all of these, let's just run it from the top and see what goes on. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to close down this slate JPEG now. No, I'm also going to close down my watermark one because this actions list should do it all for me. So all I need to do is choose the image that I want the watermark on. So I'll choose a different image. So here's uh, C JPEG and clicking on watermarking two at the top, I will just click on to play and all being well, it should whisk through all the options and save it. There you go. So I've now got this um, watermark on there. Now let's just have a look in Windows Explorer what's gone on. So I'll just jump into there. And can you see now I've got this C copy PNG, admittedly the file size is much bigger. I wouldn't probably recommend you do that. Um, you'll probably fine tune it a bit more, but suffice to say, I've now recorded um, a macro or an actions list, which when I repeat the actions, it will automatically save a copy of it as a PNG in the same folder. Now, you're probably going to be saying next, well, I don't want to save it in the same folder. Um, I may want to change the file format, but I would want to put it in a destination area. Well, not a problem. What I've done is in my folder list here, I've created a watermarking folder, a source and target. So what I'm going to tell it to do now is if I just get rid of all these extra PNGs I don't want. Another reason why I use a different format so I can tell straight off what's what. Um, these four images I want to convert to PNGs with watermarks and put them into target. Um, now it sounds quite complicated to do this but it, it actually isn't. You've done all the hard work by doing um, the actual macro um, in the actions. So what do we do? Well I'm gonna just close down everything now. So save changes no close again no and now go to the file menu and choose automate and then batch okay so in here we've got the set is default um, actions well yes because over here um, oh, I've just high hidden it there let's just move it over you'll see that I've created this watermarking to option inside the um, default actions were just slightly off the screen there, but there we go. Um, it's on watermarking marking two, and the folder I've already chosen it as being the source. And in destination, I'm going to make sure I've got folder and choose um, a target destination, which I've called target. So again, just click on the choose button, brings up a dialog box, and then you just find where you want to put it. Now, the important thing is tick this box, override action. I cannot stress this enough. This is where you'll go wrong if you're, if you're not careful. You've got to make sure that's ticked because you want it to do the saving options. However, you're overriding the folder location where it's going to. So you've got to make sure you override the actions. And that's why you need the save option in the actions list because you want to choose your file format, um, your interlace options, all that sort of stuff. You want to to do in the actions but the only thing which is different is you're overriding in the actions where it's going to place the file so with all that done I've told it to select a folder and choose the um, destination I'm going to click on OK I'm going to pause the video because this will take a few seconds to run oh I must choose a destination folder I thought I did let's just do that again target and OK and let's OK again Okay, so now that's all done. Let's just go into uh, Windows Explorer. So there's my source files. Let's have a look in target. And lo and behold, I've got all these different files. So let's just have a look. Let's open up this um, uh, wet sand one. And all being well, we should see once it goes into um, Photoshop, um, we've now got the watermark. 
there you go now pros and cons as you can see what's happened here is because the image width isn't as wide as all the others it's cut it short so um, this is really the end of this actions video but bear in mind that not all actions are going to be suitable for every single image so make sure that you find a common denominator in regards to the size of your watermarks and so on but as a result you've got it um, and there you have it hopefully this has explained how you can do actions on mass and on individual um, images so thanks for watching